Before we begin, it's important for me to warn you that this video is going to contain some sensitive topics. It's simply impossible to discuss the X-Men without mentioning and referencing real-world issues. So if you're not okay with that, then this video might not be for you. I just have to warn you before we really get into it. Now, I'm not really a fan of the X-Men. Uh, most of this has to do with how they're handled and they're presented rather than them as an idea. Because as an idea, they're extremely simple. All a mutant is, at least in the Marvel Universe, is a person who's born with superpowers. Later, this was explained further by saying that mutants all possess a genetic quirk, which causes them to develop superpowers. To quote Stan Lee on their creation, I couldn't have everybody bitten by a radioactive spider or exposed to a gamma ray explosion, and I took the cowardly way out. I said to myself, why don't I just say they're mutants? They were born that way. And in 1987, Jack Kirby gave an interview in which he said, The X-Men, I did the natural thing there. What would you do with mutants who were just plain boys and girls and certainly not dangerous? You school them, you develop their skills. So I gave them a teacher, Professor X. Of course, it was the natural thing to do, instead of disorienting or alienating people who were different from us. I made the X-Men part of the human race, which they were. Possibly radiation, if it's beneficial, may create mutants that'll save us instead of doing us harm. I felt that if we train the mutants our way, they'll help us. And not only help us, but achieve a measure of growth in their own sense. And so, we could all live together. All of this is very important to remember. Because everything that I'm going to say about why the X-Men don't work stems from the deviation from these ideas about their creation. I'm sure by now, some people who are even marginally familiar with the X-Men, or Marvel in general, are going to say, wait a minute, aren't the X-Men supposed to be an allegory for outgroups that are oppressed? No. No, they're not. That idea was added later. Consider for a moment the X-Men's greatest foe, Magneto, a man whose backstory is that he was in the concentration camps of Nazi Germany during World War II, and his two greatest allies, and his children, have ties to the Romani of Europe. And back to the X-Men themselves, they live in a posh boarding school, have superpowers, and work for a rich guy. They could not be less representative of outgroups if they tried. But this idea that the X-Men are somehow representative of outgroups has sort of poisoned the concept of the X-Men as an idea. Because make no mistake, you can do heroes based on outgroups. Take Black Panther, for example, or Miss Marvel. It's not impossible or wrong to make heroes about trying to improve the lives of outgroups or giving their opinions or their perspectives. But here's the thing. You can't make has superpowers the reason that they are the outgroup. Because superpowers are innately something that makes them better than everyone else. Furthermore, it makes them dangerous. You cannot draw a connection between groups that are discriminated against and mutants, because those groups do not spontaneously develop superpowers. You can't be like, the Japanese who were put in internment camps during World War II are exactly like mutants in the Marvel Universe, because Japanese people don't spontaneously develop the power to blow up cities and rewrite reality. You can't be like, black people suffering from racism is just like how people don't like mutants in the Marvel Universe. Because again, black people don't spontaneously develop superpowers that could cause a mass extinction event on a whim. Beyond this, there are bigger issues to consider. First, why exactly are mutants considered an outgroup in the Marvel Universe? Seriously, this is a world that includes the Avengers, whose members are a god, a scientifically enhanced super soldier, a man altered by radiation, a man in a robot suit, and a man and a woman who shrink down due to a particle they discovered. It's a world that includes aliens, magic, super science, time travel, and dimensional travel. The world is invaded and sometimes conquered multiple times a year. Exactly why are mutants considered so beyond the norm? Beyond that, how would anyone know if you were a mutant to begin with? 
how would anyone know that you're a mutant and not, say, the result of a genetic experiment? Or the result of a scientific experiment? Or maybe you found a piece of futuristic tech lying around and it gave you superpowers? Or maybe you pissed off a wizard and he cursed you with power? No one can look at a mutant and go, yeah, that person is totally different from all these other people who have powers that we're okay with. The most basic form of discrimination, the most basic reason for discrimination, is due to people not looking or acting like the people who they're around. Differences in belief and culture cause friction between groups, and traditionally, this has caused conflicts throughout human history. But mutants come from every country, and are made up of every race, religion, gender, and creed. There is no unifying feature that they possess beyond having superpowers. They come from all walks of life, from every part of the world. There is no reason for people to even consider discriminating against mutants specifically, because no one can possibly know who is and who is not a mutant without specific genetic testing. Furthermore, if somebody in your community who you knew from childhood into teenager suddenly developed superpowers, would you consider them suddenly a pariah? Or would you be like, that's awesome, our town has a superhero now? Beyond that, in the Marvel Universe, if you're from any city that's larger than a village, Chances are you're already familiar with superpowered heroes and superpowered crime. Exactly why are mutants somehow worse than what you've already seen in the world? Beyond that, we need to ask the question why do the actions of mutants continually mimic the language and behaviors of authoritarians and radical movements across the world? Both Xavier and Magneto speak of a pan national identity for mutants, that people are part of it whether they desire to be or not. They continue to espouse the idea that they are in an eternal struggle against the forces that would oppress them, forces that must either be contained or conquered in order to ensure a glorious future for mutant kind. Here's a tip if you can swap the language of your outgroup with the language of the Red Skull, you're doing it wrong. But this goes back to the idea that mutants, by any reasonable measure, do not make for good allegory to oppressed groups. And this is made worse by the fact that writers continue to have mutants do things that portray them as monsters, or at least as extremely dangerous individuals who are deserving of public fear of them. Take, for example, X-Force, an extrajudicial assassination squad who seek out and kill threats to mutants. Here's a question. If they're meant to be an allegory for an outgroup, would it still be okay if, say, Muslims formed an extrajudicial assassination squad in order to murder people who threatened them? No, because we'd call that terrorism. What about how they continue to create nations for mutants only? Nations where mutants have rights and where non-mutants are considered second-class citizens or outright barred from entry. Does this work if we changed it from superpowers to, say, race? No, because that seems a lot like apartheid or Jim Crow era racism. Furthermore, the first time mutants created their own nation, they put Magneto in charge of it. Which is sort of like putting Osama Bin Laden in charge of your new nation that claims it only wants peace. And then they get mad that people think they're dangerous. Because, yeah, who would have thought that mutants were dangerous, given that they put the always stable and fully rational Magneto in charge, who is in no way one of the world's most wanted terrorists? Here's the real deal. Every time they do this mutant nation thing in comics, it turns into mutant North Korea. Or to use a more in-universe example, a mutant version of Latveria. Because when I think outgroups, I think of them setting up rogue states that threaten the world with their powers. It's impossible to find these people sympathetic, because they're not sympathetic. And that's without considering the amount of times various members have either destroyed the world, threatened to destroy the world, or remade the world. Take Jean Grey, focus and avatar of the Phoenix, a force which could destroy the world, possibly the universe. Consider Wanda Maximoff, a woman who has rewritten reality several times and is certifiably insane. Again, you cannot square the fact that mutants constantly take actions that put them on the wrong side of nearly every issue and trying to make them out to be some sort of allegory for outgroups. 
black people don't start rogue nations and point the equivalent of nuclear weapons at people they don't like. Jews don't rewrite reality so their people enslave everyone else on Earth. The problem is that the actions they take, absent the fact they are mutants, are the actions of monsters. They use the justification of some of history's worst dictators and murderers to justify their actions. Their behavior and their rationales are, in-universe, no different than those of Hydra. You cannot make them out to be the good guys when they actively and repeatedly take obviously villainous actions against people who do not actually threaten them. Beyond that, there is no reason why in-universe there is long-standing anti-mutant feelings, as I've already said. But the fact that mutants lay claim to people everywhere, in every country, on the grounds that they are oppressed mutant minorities, you might think that they're the bad guys. Because, you know, who else invades other countries claiming that they have oppressed minorities? Oh right, because oppressed Russian minorities was and is the justification for Russian expansion into other countries. Maybe, just maybe, don't have the people we're supposed to feel sympathetic for borrow language and ideas from dictators. Because in the end, what we're left with is a perfect storm where it's nonsensical for people to hate mutants, specifically, aside from the reasons that they give people to hate them in-universe. Beyond that, it's impossible to consider them as the put-upon minorities because they are frequently doing things that cannot be justified. There are lots of characters that are mutants that you can tell stories about using them as allegory. Characters like Dust, who is perhaps one of the best examples of how you can work the idea of mutation in with the idea as being seen as other when you're living in a culture that has vastly different culture ideas and expectations than the one you're used to. But again, if the only way that you can think to write your characters is to turn them into fascists that need more Lebenstrom for their glorious mutant race, who need to liberate their oppressed mutant minorities the world over, maybe you should put your pen down and find other characters to write. Because clearly you're not making the X-Men better, you're actively destroying them as a concept and as characters. At their best, the X-Men are characters who show how diversity is a good thing, how many people from many different backgrounds can come together to do good, how people can overcome adversity and do good things, how people with widely different views and mentalities can still find common ground and cooperate. But if you're just writing the X-Men because you want to write the mutant equivalent of separatist genocide fanfiction, then please find something else to write.